Hey, what's up, guys? It's Craig Syracuse of Walk and Faith. Get ready for the second part of this important series with Ali Landry. The name of the book, Reshape, right? So yeah. I, I love the title, and I've been sort of using that. But <laughs> when I think of reshaping, first of all, and you say it in the book, you're never too young, never too old to have a reshape, and we're constantly sort of reshaping. But what happens to me, I call it inventory, right? Mm -hmm. So when I start developing or changing or reshaping my life, then God reveals certain things inside of me. Mm -hmm. And you have to start cutting things out of your life. Mm -hmm. Habits, right? Mm -hmm. Especially eating habits and Sometimes it's friends and families and mm -hmm. things you watch. Mm -hmm. So tell me about, first of all, where did you get the title Reshape? What is it sort of inspired by? And what happens when I start to reshape my life? I think the title, uh, first it started out as a company. It came from when I was doing that talk show. Mm -hmm. And it was my health that I had to reshape. I went to a naturopathic doctor. I got my first blood panel done. I had so many aha moments. I was having a different experience feeling like, I had a say in all this. I could be an active participant in my health and change the way I feel. I don't have to settle for feeling like mm. this. And that was so empowering to me, especially because I knew that all of my other friends were feeling the same way. And if I could share this with them, help them change, then my gosh, wow. it's so empowering. But none of my friends were talking about it. They were just like, yeah. And I felt like at you know that age of 40s, you just kind of settle in. And I was just like, you know what? I don't have to settle. I really can reshape my life. I don't have to settle for things that are no longer serving me just because it's later in life, I'm busy. Well, I have a friend, mentor, his name is Robin Sharma. He was so kind to write something for the back of the book. He started talking about the interior empires, which is what I mentioned before, the heart, mm -hmm. the soul, the health, and the mind. And I started, again, doing inventory, thinking about those areas. And then realize I've had other reshapes in my life where I started one way and because I dug into those specific areas and did some really deep work, I came out a different person, better. I had a choice not to do the work. So then it all sort of made sense and it all sort of came together and then it kind of came out. Reshape your life. Don't settle yes. because you are worth it. And sometimes we need to be reminded of that. We do. Like you are worth it. Like you can do this. Like I believe in you. Yeah, because you're right. Some people have never heard that. Yeah. You know, we just assume that we were lucky and blessed to, to grow up in a household yeah. where we had love and support, but not everybody yeah. has that. Yeah. You know, to actually just hear it and to see it. And then you talk about your trials and tribulation, what you overcame, but to hear it from someone, we shouldn't settle. God has a plan for us. Mm -hmm. And you said earlier too about how do we discover our purpose? What are we passionate about? One of the reasons why we're here, right? Fulfill yeah. our purpose, to use our gifts. And you talk about all that in the book. These are things that everybody needs to hear, but yeah. unfortunately haven't. And also that positive self-talk. That's why I talk a lot about superpowers, right? We have a hard time. I always refer to women because all my friends and oh, that's fine. Oh, that's what I'm fine. personally going through. I'm sure you're going through some of the things. That's fine, that's fine. But I always think like, you know, you feel guilty a little bit about saying positive things about yourself, anybody, because you feel like, oh, I'm not being humble yeah, or yeah. we shouldn't say those things. And I feel like we need to honor ourselves and we need to recognize those things that not only in ourselves, but also in others. And so I go through a process or at least talk about it. How do you recognize your own superpowers? And let's yes. give ourselves a little pat on the back. You are an incredible communicator. You're able Thank to you. connect with people and connect people, right? That's a superpower. That's actually what I say. When people say, who am I? I say, communicator for Christ. That's what I am. There you go. Thank you. So I want people to start thinking about what is my superpower, right? And then you also look at who you surround yourself with. Yes. Surrounding yourself with people who feel like sunshine, right? It's almost like there's a light that's exuding the Holy from Spirit. them, right? That's what I call the Holy Spirit. The, when I see someone, I say, there's something about you. There's something about you. Can't, it's the Holy Spirit. That's what I say. That it thing, right? Yes. That it's, they talk something about. something you can't. It's the Holy Spirit. So let's surround ourselves with, like everyone in our circle should feel like that. Should feel like sunshine, right? When they shine their light on you, you just feel like, oh, they see me and they recognize my superpowers. They lift me up. Instead of yeah. surrounding ourselves with people who focus on the negative and sort of bring you down a little bit. It's just really awareness. But I've learned along my path and my journey that changed the course of my life, changed the way I move through this world and changed my mindset for wow. sure.
And I love the way you define mindset in the book too. I'm not going to try to quote it, but I remember you. <laughs> I read it, I was like, because everyone talks about mindset, mindset, but you actually define it. Yeah. And you explain what it is, a perspective yeah. on how we see things. And surrounding yourself with people is so important because yeah. we get so comfortable. Yeah. Right. And when you're talking about reshaping, when I read, like my prayer is always that my convictions wake me up at night. Mm. I want God to reveal throughout the day what I did wrong or how I could have behaved differently. Yes. You know, accepting a compliment is really honoring God. You know, when I get that feeling that I need to write the email, to me, ignoring that is not honoring God. There's a reason why God is putting that or allowing yes. me to see that to say, let me email this person. Yes. For whatever reason, it's not about me. It's about you. It's yes. about who you're impacting. Yes. So all of that is is how we honor God. Yes. But it's challenging. I love that you said that because I'll give another example of that that I share with my kids, my daughter. It's super simple, right? Like this is a bigger thing as an adult. You feel like the need to write an email to share something with something that you felt mm -hmm. was delivered to you. I use it as an example with compliments with my kids. If they tell me, oh, mommy, she's so nice, or she has such a pretty smile, or I love her eyes, or her hair is so pretty, I was like, you need to tell her that. You know, kids can be a little shy and a little, I was like, that was delivered to yes. you from God, and you have to give that gift exactly. to her. That is gonna be a gift to her. And when you tell her that, I want you to wash her face and see what happens. That's great. So just to understand it, in that super simple yep. way, it's true. How many times that we are delivered things and I feel like I need to say something. Oh my gosh, are you thinking it? But you just never say anything. Yeah. You're like you holding back a gift. You right? know what I do too is, I, we're in Israel. Yeah. My mother's like, why do you buy so many rosary beads? I buy tons okay. because I walk around with them and I give them out because you never know. And most mm -hmm. of the time, I don't even say, I just go here and I walk away. Because yeah. you don't know, or you say hello, or just these little simple things because there's a reason. The, yeah. the probability of us passing in the street and all that, there's a reason sometimes. So if you have that feeling, just smile, say hello, yeah. say something. Yeah. Because I always feel like that's God's way of just yeah. sharing and letting people know that they're loved. It's like so many things you're saying, it's like, you know, we're bouncing off of each other. Speaking of the rosary beads, I was same Israel a week after you. And I also bought some, and I bought one specifically for a girlfriend of mine. Her mom was visiting for Christmas and her mom got COVID while mm. she was here and put in the hospital and no one could see her. And I was just like, I've got to give her this rosary because I took that rosary and I had it on all Stones. of the holy sites, right? So I took the rosary, I just dropped it off on her front porch. I was like, this is supposed to be your Christmas gift. I need you to take it to the hospital and give it to your mom. I need her to have this rosary now. Her mom, I just saw her last week. She's wearing the rosary around her neck. Oh, wow. She's like, oh, I have no idea. I did not let it go. It was the only thing that got Imagine me that. through. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know anybody there. My daughter wasn't there. I didn't know what they were giving me. I was so afraid. And this was the only thing that got me through. So you're right. It's a simple act. You never know. So many stories like that that's happened to me, very similar where I'll just give it to someone. Yeah. My son's teacher was like, I really need this. My mother's in the hospital. Yeah. I taught my son that always give away. The more yeah. we make, the more we give away. Yeah. He's always given away. Now Beautiful. it's Pokemon cards. Bro. <laughs> Which is like, oh, I, I got to get a, another job just to buy Pokemon. He's texting me. Give me Pokemon Trust cards. Me. Right? Those things are expensive. I buy from Japan now. Oh no my more gosh. cards from the United it's States. Like $40 a pack. Now it's Japan. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Your story, your life, 
Amazing, right? But then, like us all, you mentioned one earlier, a, a sort of a dark period, right? Mm -hmm. Which, from that though, you met Alejandro, mm -hmm. and then you learned about forgiveness, but then you went through another period of your life, which mm -hmm. was very challenging and tested your faith, mm -hmm. and then you were able to find the devotion to Mary. Mm -hmm. So when they told us that we could film here, which is Our Lady of Sorrows, but part of the retreat center, I said, okay, God, this is meant to be. Now, you leaned on Mary during that time. Something happened, a spiritual part of your life that sort of allowed you to move forward. Yeah. What took place? So I grew up Catholic, right? Prayed to Mary. And then in my 20s, my friend, Protestant, got me to start reading the Bible, told me pray straight to Jesus, don't bother with Mary, saints, go straight to the big guy. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, yeah, that makes sense to me, right? And I sort of just that, even though when I went back and sort of recommitted to my Catholic faith, I was still just like, I respect and love Mary, but mm -hmm. I was still praying to the big guy. And then when a tragedy happened in our family, and I tell the story in the book where we lost my husband's father and brother in a horrible incident. We were angry, really angry with God because his father was the most beautiful soul mm. that you will ever meet. And then you question, how could you have taken, like, what are the good ones, you know? So it was tough. I saw my husband struggling. You know, we were still going through the motions. We were going to mass on Sunday, but we were upset. And we didn't really know how to get back into that relationship with God at that point. We just didn't understand. Yeah. There was no answers, right? And I was asked to host a Catholic conference. And I remember there was a priest, his name is Father Michael Gately, and he wrote a book. It's a devotional to Mary. I'm sitting on the sideline watching in the wings because I'm getting ready after he goes off, I'm gonna announce the next person. It was just something came to me in that moment. And I have chills right now. I totally have chills right while I'm telling you. And I was like, it's Mary. Oh. And I wanna cry. I was like, it's Mary. As soon as I had a break, I bolted to our hotel room where he wouldn't even come down. I said, Alejandro, you need to meet this priest. And Father Michael Gately, there's a devotion to Mary, and I'm telling you, Mary is the way. When I hear myself say that, it doesn't even sound like me. And I set up a meeting with Alejandro and the priest. He gave us this book, and we started this devotion, and it was a miracle. It was Mary that brought us back in union with her son. Wow. That was crazy. I don't know how we would have got there otherwise. I mean, I'm sure we would have, but it was just like, See bam. How many things have to line up. Delivered. Oh. Boom. Call Alejandro. He met the priest. We read the thing, and there was not a doubt in our mind. And then it was such a graceful, peaceful, beautiful journey back into relationship with God because we were angry. We were really angry. And here we are today where yeah. my husband, and he'll share it with you, is about to make the movie of Mary. <laughs> Unbelievable. But how many things had to line up, you Crazy know, things. at the conference, the priest, the yeah. book? It's amazing how God And worked. I didn't even have a devotion. I wasn't even praying to Mary. So now, you know, all hail to the queen. <laughs> so that's, why, that's why when they said to come here, I said, this is the perfect place. Yeah. It's the perfect place. Yeah, for me, my moment was Fatima. We were doing a pilgrimage. I don't think wow. about Senior Jamie was there. He was there, the Brazil one. Or if uh -huh. he was, he was probably in a hotel. But I had this <laughs> call. I was filming a documentary on a bunch of kids going to meet uh, Pope Francis at the time. Or maybe it was Pope Benedict. And I had this feeling of the Holy Spirit uh -huh. that really transformed my life. Because mm. I was always in TV and always chasing. But mm. that was the moment where I called my mother and I said I was sorry for like the things I was doing. You know, because I wasn't living the life that she intended for me to live. And then I was on that journey to find out who's this Jesus guy that's been chasing me my whole life. I've always involved in the church, but then like, you know, I want to be a director and a filmmaker. Yeah. So you start running and you following what the world says. You do things your way. Yeah. And then I realized like that I needed to find out who Jesus was. And yeah. then I was on that journey for the past over 10 years, just on fire for my faith, just mm -hmm. really trying to take all the gifts that he's given me mm -hmm. and use them for his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been doing. Same as you. I mean, you know, <laughs> and it's not easy in this business to be so open about your faith in Hollywood and, and just in general. I mean, it's challenging. Yeah, it is challenging. It is challenging for sure. But, you know, it is what it is. It is who I am. Yes. <laughs> and you're honest and you're open. Yep. So I'm hoping that, I don't know, 
great things will come. Oh, I'm, t- I'm telling I don't know you. what's in store. I'm telling you. I mean, and I know, you know, I'm we just open. finished the book. I, I, the process. I mean, I thought it was like three months. I'm like, two years, three years for a book. You know, all the rewrites and edits. So I know what goes into it. But it's amazing. Because I'm telling you, you have it all in one book. You know, <laughs> everything is in this one book. It's powerful. Thank you. If you need a space in Brooklyn, I mean, we have an amazing facility. Really? Yeah, it's the oldest opera house in wow. the Tri-State area. We renovated it called the Emmaus Center. Monsignor Jamie and I have been working on that for years. But Sounds gorgeous. if you need a space, you want to do a, a tour there, anything you need from us in the Brooklyn Diocese, please. I might please. take you up on that. Hey, it's there. It's <laughs> vacant. He, the, the boss is there, and he doesn't say no to anything. So Good. He, I really advise people to read the book mm-hmm. and just how honest and open you are and your stories, Mount Fuji, all these things you've accomplished. 1996, right, Miss USA. I mean, mm-hmm. each chapter is like its own film or its own story mm-hmm. i'm looking at all the things i've accomplished i'm like man i'm you I, are you kidding me you. you've told me a few stories you've already in the short lot. time that we've known each other you've got a lot and it's amazing hey guys i hope you enjoyed today's special episode with ali landry always remember you have the ability to inspire and evangelize through words and actions god bless you everybody, it's Craig Syracuse. I'm the host of Walk in Faith, and I'm also the executive director of the Emmaus Center. If you would like to find out ways that you can contribute and help us bring the Word of God, help us evangelize, please log on to EmmausBrooklyn.org for more information. God bless you.